Last time, we made an improvement on our linear interpolation function by upgrading to a Lagrange polynomial. The middle of our interpolation looked much better, but the endpoints proved untamably wild. In this episode, we're going to combine the two approaches to arrive at a better result. It turns out that the problem with the Lagrange polynomial is that the interpolation on one side of the dataset is being overly influenced by data on the other side of the dataset. After all, physics teaches us that the universe is local. The behavior of a function at one end shouldn't dictate the behavior at the other. So instead of including all the data points in our Lagrange polynomial, we can include just the data points around the point of interest. This is exactly what we did in our linear interpolation scheme, where we used only one data point to the left and one data point to the right to make a line. Here, we're going to expand to the two data points to the left and the two data points to the right to make a cubic polynomial. And cubic polynomials are much better behaved than 20th order polynomials. In this code, which is available in a link in the description below, we've set up a function that creates a cubic Lagrange polynomial around the x value of interest. First, we find the two data points just to the left of x and the two data points just to the right of x. We call the first data point in this set j min. Then we set up our Lagrange polynomial just like last time, but we're only using these four data points, not the entire set of data. The result behaves much better at the endpoints because we're not picking up those unnecessarily high order terms. And we still get a guarantee that the polynomial will pass through every data point exactly. But these improvements have come with a price. The kinks are back. If you graph the derivative of our patched together polynomial function, you can see a discontinuity at each data point. The universe usually doesn't hand us functions with discontinuous derivatives, so this is a new problem we'll need to address. The answer we'll see next time is our final interpolation scheme, the cubic spline. You should now be able to use cubic Lagrange interpolation on a set of data to obtain values between the data points. Copy the code in the link in the description below and enter this data into a list. Then use the cubic Lagrange interpolation function to answer the questions on the screen.